Welcome back, back to Beast Machines Monday. I am your host, Decepticon Doug. And here's your other host, Predacon Z Paul. Z and we are talking about Forbidden Fruit. And uh, this episode begins with primal rage. Rage. There's a sparring session happening between Cheetor and Black Arachnia. And Cheetor's like, meow. And Cheetor's all like, ha. Ah, ah, ah. And she's always good at kung fu -y. And Cheetor's like, I'm a cat. I Meanwhile, well, off in the other corner, Rat Trap is sitting there trying to do his I am transform thing. He's just trying to figure it out because, again, he's still frustrated. He can't transform, even though he took that, you know, counter virus thing. And he, that's all out of his system now. So now he's got to go back to the old fashioned way. And, no, not the old-fashioned way, the new-fashioned way of finding your center and focusing and uh, coming to peace with the universe and, um... Well, he's not doing the chant right. He's supposed to be like, oh, all righty then. Oh, all righty then. Yeah. And there's and, a bat thing watching that. Yeah, so you could, yeah, I mean, you can tell it's a bat. Come on, guys. Let's not fool ourselves. There's something up there that looks like vengeance. Mm-hmm. And that the looks night. like the night. Rat Trap's all like, I'm stuck in this rat body. And Optimus is like, hey, you just gotta try harder. Tell that to uh, Silverbolt and Rhinox. Oh! 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 Optimus, visibly hurt, goes and cries in the corner. He's like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's um, like, ooh, ooh. Psych! Ah! <laughs> Jumps up and starts wrestling with somebody. The rat trap turns on the, the light on his phone. It is a bat, and Optimus is wrestling with a gorilla-sized bat. So he does this sonic scream. Optimus is like, ow, my ears. E. The bat flies away. They're like, whoa, what was that a bat? And they're like, well, this must be a natural bat. Naturally. And then Optimus is like, don't talk about bats. Let's go catch them. So they chase after the bat, smashing through stuff, sneaking through places. Rat trap grabs him. He well, squeaks, his ear squeaks. Yeah, they get into a bigger space and uh, try to capture him with a web. That doesn't Cheer. work. Optimus gets trapped in the web. And, and Rat Trap, too. <laughs> the yeah. fools. There's idiots, but Cheetor transforms, grabs him, and pins him down. He drops in that extremely timely reference. Get your paws off me, you damn dirty ape. Even though Cheetor is the one who grabbed one him. Got him. Then he's like, oh, you can talk. He can talk, he can talk, he can talk, he can talk. I can sing. And so they're like, okay, well, what happened to you? Why are you a bat? And he's like, well, you see, I came from Cybertron. It's a planet just above us. And Megatron came in. Many moons ago. And he's like, hey, virus. And hey, tanks. And then... Suddenly all the survivors were being shot down by tanks and motorcycles and even jets. And then I ran and I ran and I ran till I couldn't run no more. And then I fell down a dark chasm and mm -hmm. went splat. And when I woke up, I was a bat. And I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. That's a nice ability to have. Turn into a bat just when you need to. And then the, the jets come in, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, Jet and, Storm and his boys. And oh yeah, naturally this bat guy, he can't transform. Because he must have the same virus that's... That was had, plaguing the, the, them before. Yeah, the transformation lock virus. In the first episode. Can I... Yes, you can. I was... Oh, you know, actually, never mind. I was, I was going to point out a, a flaw in the logic, but I think there are certain things implied. Well, okay. I'll, I'll just talk about it real quickly right. here. So... You've piqued my curiosity. The virus wasn't just a transformation lock. It was also killing them in the first episode. They were going... Zzz, 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 zzz. But that's okay. not happening to, to Mr. Bat Boy. He's just a bat trapped in beast mode. But maybe it's implied that most Cybertronians did die from the transformation lock virus. But some of them, it did not affect that way because 
viruses, at least in our organic beings, they don't have a 100% fatality rate. They, they have a percentage that survives. So maybe this virus, he's in that percentile that survives whatever it was that was killing the, the Transformers, but it still locked him in, into beast mode, if I had to throw a guess out as to why it is that he... How did he get his beast mode in the first place? I think that it gets explained later, but it's definitely not explained in here. I agree with you. The virus, which was just a big glowy green light thing, Whoosh, virus. which it was so stupid. Um, <laughs> maybe that was just like a visual representation of like this was the virus and it swept over everything like an evil flood. I don't know. But I think just like a big green light, like, whoa, yeah, I'm dead. And then all, there's a few survivors and then tanks are... It seems too easy and clean. Like, it was like Megatron just like showed up one day, made a virus and just... Poof. Weren't these guys like fighting a war for eons? Wasn't Megatron running from both the Maximals and the Predacons? But he comes back and all of a sudden he just drops a virus bomb? Maybe his goals are different now. Now he's no longer trying to help the Predacons and subvert the Maximals and their control over them. Now he's just trying to wipe everybody out. And furthermore, why is Cybertron the only planet with Transformers? I mean, it shouldn't be. In many versions of Transformers, there's tons of colonies. So why haven't they been like, we haven't heard anything from the home planet in a long time. Maybe we should send a fleet. That's a good point. Anyway, so we get a little bit of info from Mr. Bat. Because Cheetor is in uh, robot mode, somebody scanned him. And it's Mr. Jetstorm and all of his little buddies. He's like, hey guys, let's go shoot some Maxis. It's definitely one of those cases where uh, these jets do not do not have a good aiming system. Something Something's wrong with their tracking system. Well, the problem is... The jets are all floating over here, right? Mm -hmm. And they're in a tight formation. The Maximals are over yonder in the canyon. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, yeah, and they're taking their time to transform, and they're like, oh, transformation, transformation. But all these zoom, zoom blasters going by them, and there's a fight, as there usually is. And the bad guy does his little, like, screech, and then they all turn on each other, right? Because yeah. he scrambles their targeting systems, and so they just they decide to target whatever they see, and so they're all destroyed. And one even blasts Jetstorm, and Jetstorm's like, "Ow!" He's like, "I thought we were friends." I didn't like that. And then he flies away, and uh, the final jet just I guess he fell asleep or something like that because they he, they they never address what happened to him. Yeah, he just he he's the one who shot Jetstorm, and everyone's like, "Ha ha." So the back smalls they transformed to beast mode, and the bad guy he's like, "Hey, why don't you come over here? I got this tree. It's pretty cool." There's fruit on this tree. And you should eat it, because nothing bad will happen to you if you eat it. And they're like, this is a really, really good idea. The other Maximals are like, yeah, well, let's eat a piece, because why not? Cheater's like, whoa, guys. This is probably a bad idea. We just met this guy. We don't know if he's cool we or not. We don't know this fool for shit. Optimus was like, Cheetor, there was a time when I didn't know you. And Cheetor was like, that was in the third grade. Yeah, they instantly get like very more, a little more animalistic and a little more like, Optimus is like, Hoo, 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 eat the food, 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 hoo, hoo, hoo. And Ratchet was like, wee, 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 wee. Hey, and, uh, and, and Black Rack was like, <laughs> and Cheetor's like, oh, I can't believe this. I'm going to walk away and leave my friends behind. Because they're monkeying around. The bad guy, he's like, he's like, hey, he, look, I didn't know this was going to happen. I, I just, I eat the food, I get better. And, and Cheetor was like, I don't believe you because you stink. I, and he's like, you're probably working for Megatron. And, and he's like, whoa! Megatron killed my family! I don't even like him! So Cheetor is trying to get everyone to stop eating the fruit. He's like, don't do it. It's not a good idea. It's a terrible idea. Check this out. And then he runs over and he attacks the tree. And like he's some kind of gardener. Cheetor, he starts to chant a old Cybertronian folk song. He's a lumberjack and he's okay. He sits all night and he works all day. I cut down trees, I skip and jump. I like to press wildflowers. I put on women's clothing and hang around in bars. And just like those lumberjacks, he chops the tree right down. And instantly the tree dies. And instantly all of the Maximals are like, whoa, that was a weird thing that we did just then. That was so weird. We should probably not ever eat fruit ever again. Never eat fruit is the moral of today's story. And Optimus is even like, you know, scientifically speaking, I think on a molecular level, we're not supposed to eat fruit. And in doing so, the fruit started to unwrite all of our maximal programming and devolved our brains to a point where we thought we were the animals. It's like, Optimus, how the hell did you jump to that conclusion all at once? <laughs> I mean, it could have just been food poisoning. 
The jets do come back, and there's more jets, and then... There's more pew-pew. And there's fighting. At some point, Bat Boy gets hit. Some injuries need to happen. Yep. And then he's like, guys, get out of here. I'm finished. Go without me. Tell Scarlet. I do give a damn. <laughs> Tell Tony Timo I'll be coming home for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> he loves to bring that one out. <laughs> but to be fair... It is a good one. I it's, love that it, one. It's a good one. So Optimus he says, hey, do you remember that time that I had that ability? You know which ability I'm talking about, right? That magical ability? Oh, the one where the Oracle made it so that you could reformat anyone that you came across? Yeah, that's the ability. Oh, did I'm you, about you, to do you, it again. You can use that now, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should probably be careful, though, because I'm a little low on energy. Because we all know that's a weakness. Yeah. And that, that was established firmly in the first episode. Mm -hmm. Is that if you reformat somebody, you could run out of energy to a near fatal degree. <laughs> ah, now I'm a bat with a robot bit part thing. He does. He looks the exact same. <laughs> yeah, everyone just else changed the color. Everyone else got like a real big makeover, but now they just got like he's just got like robot trimming around. So he's flying around and knocking over the rest of the jets because he's a bat and he can do that. He goes wee 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 wee, and he even transforms. He's like, I am transformed, and Bat Tap's like. Oh my god, this is so embarrassing. He's had this body for all three minutes and he can transform. I'm, I'm such a loser. Oh, I'm so such a stupid idiot. And Optimus is like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? And then uh, he has this cool little like sonic vibrator thing that he can shoot from his like shoulder. No, it's like a cannon on his back. So he tips forward and he takes out all these jets. Get over here. It starts reeling him in yeah. with his jet scream. He's got another guy that like, comes out of his mouth and it just... But it pulls him. Yeah, it's a thing. That and then he's like, oh, I'm dead. But then he leaves, because he can't be dead. We need him later. Yeah, and then the, the jets grab him, and they, mm. they let them play off. And then he's like, hey, guys, I can transform now. Thanks so much. Also, my name's Night Scream. I'm a bat. I'm Let pretty badass. <laughs> <laughs> and then Optimus is like, I'm dead. You're in charge to your And but then actually, was in, a, in all seriousness, though, a nice little twist, um, Optimus acknowledges the fact that Cheetor's instincts were correct in this. Maybe the other Maximals were a little too hasty and tried the fruit, which got them into this whole situation in the first place, where they were basically unable to defend themselves against the Viacons. And then he bestows upon him, Knighthood, you are a man, son. Mm -hmm. And then he does the huh, 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 <laughs> and then Optimus poops himself. <laughs> the end. What did you like about it? <laughs> um... Decepticon deck. <laughs> Thanks for asking, Predacon Paul. I really appreciate that, that you value my opinion. I like Night Scream. He's okay. He's you know? such an edgelord. Yeah, I mean, he's, yeah, he's pretty He's pretty edgy. He's like... He's, he's like, like, get away from me. Mm, da, 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 Nobody's da, da, that edgy. Okay, you sure? You sure he's yeah. not... Fair but he's like, he's like straight up 90s edgy where he, he's like one step away from telling people not to have a cow. Even he's got the hair that comes like down there in mm -hmm. his robot mode. Yeah. Probably has an earring in his right ear. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. They don't make him like that anymore. No. Yeah, Night Scream, he's okay. You know, he's a, he's a, he's, a, he's a kind of a different uh, flavor of character. Uh, he's, he's clearly a young guy in that role that Cheetor used to be in, but also, but he's also very different than Cheetor mm -hmm. used to be, so. I feel like him being young, like young kind of like Cheetor used to be, mm -hmm. and Cheetor being kind of older and more wise and more mature, more seasoned as they say, mm -hmm. uh, Mm. It's delicious. I could see, possibly, them having a moment where Cheetor is trying to bestow his years of wisdom onto this reckless new young hot-blooded kid, and then maybe see bits of himself in him, and maybe he'll experience the same level of frustration that Optimus had. There was times when Optimus would just be like, Ugh! Cheetor! <laughs> It'd be nice for it to come full circle in a very poetic way. And then to watch the kid die in front of him would be just like the, the icing on the cake. Oh, jeez. It went dark. Yeah. So uh, th he's a good addition to the team. team. Again, it's also just nice to get, again, more new blood in there. Yeah. So it's not just the same old characters. And we are expanding the roster. Uh, although there are still a lot of, like, questions as to how did he turn into a bat on Cybertron well, and that the, kind of stuff. The thing about him is you can tell that he's kind of batty, right? And his logic is erratic. I did batty, like batty coda. So hear my batty word and exercise a little prudence when dealing with.
humans. Humans? Where? There was something so innocent about the kid. Like, you know, like, he kind of reminds me of, like, like, you know in the old movies, you always had those, those, those little kids who were pickpockets? And they got, like, the weird brown hat. Like Oliver Twist? Yeah, something like that or something. Mm. And they don't trust adults, and they're just like, get away from me, mister, you know, but they want what's best for him, but he wants to be free to go do whatever he wants or whatever. Clearly, he's not equipped to deal with the dangers of the world on his own because he's a child. But in this case, it's Viacons and Megatron are the dangers, and you got this little plucky little kid who's deep down probably has a heart of gold. We'd like to think so. I like that it opens up with them training. I think because now they know they need to stay in beast mode, they need to try and make the best of their beast modes, and so they're them training and fighting in beast mode is really, I think it's a good idea. I think they should have done a callback to uh, In the Wild or whatever that episode was called, when they actually learned how to use their beast modes because oh, they yeah. were forced into it. And then Tiger Charm was like, Silence! Like, there should have been at least some callback to that. Like, yeah. hey guys, remember that time we lost the rectifier coil? I remember what it's called. Yes! A rectifier, rectifier coil. They have had to deal with that kind of thing before, but... Uh... And then they realized that their beast modes were not hindrances if they learned how to use them properly. What gets me, and this is something I don't like about this episode... Right. What do you think you should be looking at when multiple enemies are targeting you and firing at you with projectiles? and you're using your knives to deflect. What should you be looking at? Probably the things coming toward you. Yeah. If I, if I had to guess. Or at I least like look at the people who are shooting at you and then use your instincts to block. Several times in this episode, he's like, but Optimus, here's the thing. And he's like, tch, tch, tch. it's like, really? You're gonna take your eyes off the immediate threat to have a conversation with MonkeyBot? It's one thing if you're like a Jedi and you have this sort of like weird intuition, but he's not, he's a, he's a robot. It just it really bothered me. I'm just like, why are you not looking at the freaking jets? It's like, it's like in so many shows when people are driving and they have extended conversations like this, and then it's like, are you going to look at the road? It drives me crazy. If I if I'm driving, yeah, and sometimes my foot gets caught on my my floor mat, mm -hmm. and then I end up pulling it and folding it up sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I have to reach down. This happens like maybe once every couple of months, but sometimes. It's really annoying. And I gotta reposition my floor mat. I take my eyes off the road for a second and I'm paranoid. I'm like, okay, I need to look up again. I'm not veering off the road or anything, but my instincts are like, you need to be watching where you're going. No. Hey, Doug, how you doing? <laughs> Good? No problem. Yeah, yeah everything's going great. So uh, are we transitioning to what we didn't like or is there anything you wanted to say that what you did like? Well, I like the back guy. Okay. Not much was said about the tree and like why it affected them the way that they did, but so, Optimus gave us that shotgun blast of exposition uh, that just <laughs> did not seem... <laughs> didn't make any sense that he just pieced it all together from that. It was just sort of like, we need to give this an explanation now. Well, luckily Optimus knows everything. So yeah, things we, I guess we didn't like. Let's get into that a bit. The whole fruit plot, subplot thing, it kind of just happens and then unhappens. So they eat the fruit and then they're all like, ooh, 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 ooh. I'm a spider, I'm a spider. <sighs> and Cheetah's like, oh, I didn't like that this happened. And then he leaves, and then that guy's like, I didn't know that was going to happen. And then Cheetah's like, well, let's undo it. And then he cuts the tree down, and then they're back to normal. They're like, oh, that happened. All it did kind of show was that Cheetor had these instincts. Balls. Oh, yeah, instincts. And, but, and the balls to say, hey, this isn't a good idea. <laughs> and then uh, he fixed it. By cutting the tree down. Then the tree was just gone, and it just seemed like that was it. Like, I just didn't understand the whole point of it all. You're right, 100%. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. <laughs> but? But. Okay. <laughs> in the end, the fruit ground. Yes. Spreading that's into. That's true. We didn't we didn't mention that. The fruit at the very end does, it is in the ground and it starts to sprout roots. And so there are going to be ramifications. I think Beast Machines, if I'm sort of getting the vibe from the show, they tend to slow burn a lot of the more critical plot points mm -hmm. and they just sort of like sprinkle it in. It's the thing is, is that it, it seems like they didn't spend enough time even developing the, the problem of this whole thing. It was just sort of like there was a problem and then it got fixed. And I think maybe this would have been better to stretch out for a whole episode of like maybe the Maxwell start to slow down and become a little more uh, animalistic. But the moment they eat the food, they're like, I'm dumb. I'm an animal. I'm a <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just so convenient. They're instantly dumb. And then he chops down the tree. They're instantly smart again. It's just, 
a problem and then it's fixed. It just it feels all useless to me. That's just how I feel. I don't, I don't know. I just, I did, the whole thing just didn't make any sense and didn't feel good about it. I didn't feel good about any of it. Yeah, I'm right there with you. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. Like, I was trying to make a case for it. Yeah. Because they were quite literally planting the seeds. They, it's true. So maybe, maybe but, this will feel better in the long run. Yeah, yeah. But, but I completely get what you're saying in that it all just, like, it just happened way too fast. Essentially, because that's what the two stories are. It's the fruit story plus the, the Nightwing story. Nightwing? Scream. Wing. Night Scream. Night Scream. Yeah, no, Nightwing is uh, Batman's, like, uh, yeah. Robin Dick Grayson. Batman's fruit guy. Yeah, no, you're yeah, Batman's fruit delivery guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I brought you some apples. Night, uh, Night Scream. I love apples. And the Night Scream stuff, I think, is done better. It's still a little bit fast, but it's like, but it's, but at the same time, again, you only have a half hour show or 22 minute show. I think it was, uh, can we talk about Night Scream? Okay, let's talk about Night Scream. His transformation, he goes from having wings to yeah. everything just sort of melts into his body and then wings out of his feet. What <laughs> the frick, guys? So this is an And I'm watching problem. it transform in front of me and I'm like, no. This is the problem that we had with the Beast Machines Transformers from the beginning and their transformations. It's just even worse because the wings come out of his feet. <laughs> They're not even the same size. Um, Why didn't his wings just go on his back? I'm just trying to look up the toy of the character. It's making me angry. It's actually different than the toy. The toy has, uh, the wings are in the arms. So you know they, why? Because that would make sense. I've never actually seen the toy before. I've never seen it in, uh, in real life or pictures of it. So I don't know. I don't know what happened with that. Oh, there's two versions. I think this is a McDonald's version. <laughs> in the McDonald's version, the, looks, the, the wings are on the feet. Why on earth did they design the character after the McDonald's toy? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I, I don't necessarily hate the design, but the, the, yeah, the, the same. It's the same issues. The transformations are just terrible. It is so bad. I am enjoying the character work. I'm enjoying the story a bit more. Okay, if we're gonna talk about exposition dumps. Yeah, it was, it was a regular day, just like any other day. And then boom, oh my God, virus, Megatron. And then the survivors were hunting down and killed. It's like, you just breezed over what seemed like should have been months and months within the span of a few seconds. It's like, God. <laughs> and he didn't even like mention the bot that took the hit for him and told him to run. What if that was his dad or something? What if that was his best friend? What if that was his older brother? Like. Things are moving a little too fast, especially in the exposition department. Not to mention, he transforms right away when that's, again, it's kind of it's kind of a kick in the nuts to Rat Trap because, and even Cheetor and Black Rat, because even they couldn't transform right away. Like, why would he know how? I think, to be perfectly honest, how long was he watching them? How long was he listening to Optimus tell him, like, Oh. I am transformed. It shows that he was really giving it an honest try. He was giving it an effort, but he just couldn't get it. Oh, so maybe maybe because he wasn't reformatted, he couldn't transform, but he was he was there listening to Optimus. Okay, you know what? And he was trying all the right. whole time. I will rescind that and say there is a credible explanation, but I also I also like what you're saying about the other things. So I, I, I do agree about everything else kind of going like way too fast. You know what might have might have helped this? is in the flashback, we see things from up above. If we could see things from his point of view, seeing like the people that he's with, what it looks like to be on the ground with the tanks coming and the jets coming, I think that would have been a lot more poignant mm -hmm. and actually would have emphasized what it would have been like in Ground Zero with Megatron attacking. Yeah, but like how long after the initial bomb drop yeah. until the Viacons were there? Was there a need for the Viacons until Megatron realized his virus wasn't 100%? Yeah, I was don't know. Was that months? Because they would well, have had to try to scrape by and survive. Even with like a factory at his disposal, would need time to build that many troops. There's a serious gap between Ground Zero Day One and then him running for his life with that one bot survivor and then that survivor taking a hit for him. And then him falling down a hole and then just becoming a bat. There's something missing there that I think needs a story that needs to be told. The struggle of the Cybertronian people. So I mean, maybe the, I'm overanalyzing. It. If they spent this episode focusing on Night Scream, letting him actually really tell his story, maybe forgetting about the whole fruit situation. What if we, instead of having mm. the fruit situation and the Maximals at all, what if we start the episode and the Maximals aren't in it because they haven't arrived yet? Megatron's there, and it's been a couple of months. Megatron's been devising and planning, right? And then the bomb, the big green blast. 
it's him on his getting ready to go to whatever I don't know soccer practice or laser ball or whatever the kids are playing these days. Crap's hitting the fan, and then we get a time lapse. Here we are scraping by Frenadron or whatever the, whatever it is, and all of a sudden there's Viacons coming and they, and they just start getting blasted and picked off, and then they're like, oh crap, we need to run, and then it's just a chase, and then he falls down the hole. And then as he's a bat, just trying to survive, he comes across more survivors and watches them, and they are from a distance. Mm -hmm. Monkey Bot and his team. Yeah. So that would have been a really nice episode. I think it could have worked. I think it would have been a lot better than what we got here, which I do feel was just kind of a bit a bit of a mess. So a little too fruity for my taste. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Whew. I mean, you know, it, it's hard. It's hard writing a show. And they had to introduce a new character. But at the same time, you know, sometimes you get to write a little better. <laughs> uh, anything else we got to say about the episode? So we decided to like dismantle it and, and rebuild it. I think that Jetstorm and his little group, you don't necessarily have to have them constantly blasting to raise the stakes. Because mm -hmm. you lower the stakes when they can't hit the broadside of a barn. <laughs> Good point. It's comedic how bad their aim it is. It is so bad. You can only kind of feel the threat level decreasing. Yeah, th these things hunted down and killed all the Cybertronians. It doesn't feel like anything big is happening. Like, oh, they've been found. Well... They'll just have to stand there. They'll just have to all get behind Optimus's blocky thing or Cheetor's swords or a web or I don't know. Why is it called Forbidden Fruit if it's only a minor inconvenient plot point? My, <laughs> what my, the hell? It is this thing that isn't actually the central story that is just kind of there. It's a just... device that isn't even a figurative device either. It's just this thing that happens. Mm -hmm. How did you drop the fruit so bad? After a bit of deliberation and some soul searching, we are going to give this episode a generous two out of five minor inconvenient fruit. Not as forbidden as we maybe once thought. It just doesn't all come together very well. We like the new character. New character is the only reason why we're giving it two. And actually, Cheetor, Cheetor becoming a bit more of a leader, watching him grow, that's nice. Yeah. What did you think of Forbidden Fruit? Please let us know in the comments down below. Do you think we're being a little too hard on this episode? I'd really like to get your opinion on this one. We want to talk about it. You know what to do. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Because it helps, you know, the algorithm gods. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. I thought you were going to say cut the balls. Like. Don't forget to, <laughs> to caress the, the subscribe, subscribe button. button. <laughs>